Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Okami HD episode 50. 50? It's incredible. I'm your host, Ultra Director Jester. We got a whole bunch of stuff that needs done today and a couple other things that need to be done that we're going to start right now. We are here at North Ryoshima Coast and we're going to head into the ocean. The island we're looking for is this one with a ramp on it that has a chest on the end that we already opened. Up here, there is a hole. A hole that we obviously cannot dig in. We gotta use Cherry Bomb. This is important for a stray bead later on. So I'll wait for that. There we go. So with that, we'll just hop on in here. And the result is a divine spring. Praise galore! So we'll bloom these trees here. I'm glad we can do them both at once. That's nice. Uh, another clover. Another two more over here. A little bit of uh, fruit as well from blooming the tree. Oop, wrong hole. Uh, a little bit of fruit from blooming the tree, so that's a bit of extra money. And uh, it turns out... Oops. It turns out, for what we need, we have just enough money to complete uh, what, we, what we need to do today. It's a little concerning for later on, but I think we're going to be alright. So, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to head to the, this uh, Divine Spring. And uh, the guide says that we need to put in 100,000 yen. So there's 40. And here's another 40 that makes 80. Then we do it once more. And I'm not wrong, right? 80 plus 20 equals 100, 100 right? That's, yeah, that's 100,000 yen. But it doesn't trigger. So it turns out that whatever guide you read is wrong, it's 120,000 yen. And then... Our friend Bakugami will speak to us. I'm not sure how many Divine Springs we have left. But I think there's like maybe one or two, maybe. But either way, we need to get ourselves some more money if we're gonna do any more Divine Springs. And that won't be a problem later on. At least I hope not. But maybe we can find some ways to make money in, a, in one of the later episodes. Anyway, yada yada yada. Bakugami is so impressed and so pleased that we gave him all of our money. Huh. So as a result, Cherry Bomb has become more powerful and we can use two Cherry Bombs at once. So uh, we'll try it out. You make one, and then you make another. Ain't that neat. You get a technique scroll. And then off we go to the next place. The next area we're heading is Kamui. Yes. So I'm gonna definitely crossfade here and we're going to be in Kamui when it's over. And here we are. There's another divine spring around here, similar to the one we were just at, and, um... Okay, that's a weird place to put an invisible wall. But, uh, yeah. There is actually a, uh, Konohana Blossom right there that we can vine onto. Really, I can't see how I missed that several times. We got a clover here. And that'll, uh, net us another 30 praise. This is another episode where we're gonna get a whole shit ton of praise, so, yeah. Look forward to that. So one Cherry Bomb opens the crack in the wall, but as we see here, Cherry Bomb 2 is required. And I'm pretty sure you all can guess what's going to be at the bottom of this Divine Spring, right? Having to use Cherry Bomb for the first one, and now having used Cherry Bomb 2. Ugh, Cherry Bomb 2. Ugh. Clearly we're gonna get Cherry Bomb 3. But first off, bloom them trees, get them clovers, eat that fruit, make like $3. 
That didn't count. Uh, that's fire. Uh, there we go. Sometimes these clovers can get really tricky. I almost wonder if it would be easier with, like, the move controller or on the Wii version. And I think it's got motion controls. It's probably worse. It's all shaky and janky. And it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be accurate at all. So, all right. Here, in this Divine Spring, we have to give 300,000 yen. That's accurate. 300,000 yen. Nearly everything we have left. Even after the 2 million yen move we had, to, we had to buy. Even after everything we had to buy after that. All the infinity stones and everything. All the treasure we've sold. It's all of our money, almost. But at least Bakugami's pleased! <sighs> yeah, as pure as my own. When really, I have an ulterior motive for giving you such charity. You have something I need! Yes, the power of three cherry bombs. Like I said. We need to do this because he, of course, gives you a technique scroll. And this is also rather important into getting a stray bead later on. Ho oh, oh. ho. So, go ahead and grab that cherry bomb three scroll technique. Technique scroll, what did I say? And we'll make our way out. Very fortunate that I planned this up before I started. Because now, we are on our way to Wepkir Forest. Which is really not that far at all. But now that we've gotten a few technique scrolls, or brushstroke technique scrolls, or whatever the official name for those is, we can start using them and get some extra goodies. Like yet another extra clover with Power Slash 2 that we can try to bloom and get 40 praise, right off the bat. That's more than the clovers we had in those Divine Springs. So maybe... I don't think we've talked to this merchant yet. I'm thinking maybe he has something that we need, or still have yet to get. Oh, uh, no. I thought maybe he had, like, a... Uh, like a new weapon or something. But we can sell the vase that we got. From a cutback. Yeah, I got a vase during the crossfade. Anyway! Whip Cure is right around the corner, and this is probably one of the most challenging challenges this challenging game can ever offer to chat. Ooh, look, something we can cut. Anyways, challenging. We'll go ahead and dig here. Nab that clover with our expert brushwork. To net another 40 preys. Bears are already fed. And alright. In we go. Kai has been waiting out here so patiently for us to challenge her to a race, but I'm gonna go ahead and make a quick save because I'm probably gonna end up rage quitting if things go wrong. Alrighty then. Now we got that out of the way, let's race Kai. I think that's me. I mean, well, now at least. I mean, if you would have talked to me uh, when we started the game, there's no way you would have beaten me. Alright, this is definitely a very tricky race. Because you just need to go through the forest yet again, you know, to get to Ponk Tan. Except, uh, you have to actually beat Kai. Doing so is easier said than done, because she is quite fast. The longer you stay at top speed, the better. And because there's so much shit in your way trying to kill you, it's a little difficult to do. And this is also why it was a good idea to bloom as many asshole trees as you could. So that way it could make the race a whole lot easier for you later on. See, this is a lot easier to do now. So as long as you just kind of keep your top speed, you should be okay. There are a few other things you can do, though. Like I said, blooming asshole trees kind of helps uh, your progress there. But uh, there's also one other very important thing that you should uh, keep in mind when you do this race. 
And that is to make sure that you follow the signs. So yeah, this race is a flub. Let's try that again. And you'll know when you lost when you see Kai waiting for you. She turns back to human, and then she gloats for about an hour. Rematch we will. But you can't just talk to her, you have to go back. But thankfully, not back through the forest. That would have been terrible. Just takes you right back to the entrance. So then you can run up to her and talk to her again and start the race anew. Alright. Attempt number two. This has gotta be the one, right? Okay. So. Like I said, Bloom Asshole Trees, like, even if you fuck up your first playthrough, like someone I know did, you can still take the time to bloom some extra asshole trees because you're gonna lose anyway, the only thing you gotta worry about is the actual time limit itself. It's good to keep up your speed, make sure you don't run into any invisible walls that happen to be there to hinder you. Kinda keep to the sides a bit, I would also say. And keep in mind that a dash is a great way to get your speed up to level 2 automatically. Because there's like three levels of speed, walking, and then up to a run, and then the light... There's like a light flash and you're running at top speed. Staying at top speed is uh, easy to maintain, difficult to actually get to a running start. Because Kai is slight... Oh, right way here. Uh, Kai is slightly faster than your second, second gear, I suppose, and slightly slower than your top speed. But another issue is that when you go into a second screen, you're, autom you're automatically back to your first level, uh... Eh... Your first... Eh, fuck. Your first level speed. And it's good to keep as big a... Uh, big a lead as you can on Kai, because... Yeah. If you mess up, you can still recover it. I mean, this, I mean it's, it's not over yet. If we fuck up again, it's probably over, but there's also a couple other things that we can do. Let's see here. This is always the trickiest part. The ice automatically slows you down. And it's also really easy to jump and dash, which also automatically brings you back down to your second level. There's also, um... There's also some shortcuts you can take. There's that one right there, and this one over here. If you utilize them fine, then you'll be safe and alright. Yeah. Now we're getting to the most difficult one. Kai's still ahead of us, but it's still a manageable lead. There's a few ways we can shave down some time. Not getting hit by any of these snowballs is a great way to start, and God, that was fucking lucky! Kinda hit that, hit that little lip of the cliff right there to make sure that that snowball, which only comes rolling when you try to go up to that cliff, starts to rolling. Kinda hang around the curve here so that way you don't hit any of those. And here's where we can start gaining some time. You, you start gaining up jump, and you're already running at top speed. You should be all right here. See how that uh, little cone of light is coming out, coming from behind me when I run? That's how you know you're at top speed. There's one more shortcut here. The last ditch effort to make sure that you reach the end on time. A straight shot, basically. Yeah, that's a pretty good cut. Kai does not take shortcuts, so. We're just playing dirty. So really, who is the fastest one? Well, then again, this is her home turf. She knows exactly every single square inch of this forest, so she knows exactly how to... You know, whatever. There's only two re- Okay, two reasons why we actually raced her. Three reasons, then. First one is the 50 prairies. That's definitely going to come in handy. That's fantastic. Reason number two is coming up here. It is. Hang on now. Hold on. There we go. Stray bead 90. There's also one more thing we get for beating Kai in a race. And that's, well... The, the trophy for beating Kai in a race. yippee ki -yay. Next stop we are going to is Ponk Tan yet again. Last time, I promise. Because there's two straight beads in here that we haven't gotten yet, and now is probably the best time than ever to get them. 
After beating Kaina Race, I can't imagine any better time. So the first one is up in the northwest corner. What you do is kind of head past Ishaku's place. And kind of go past and go straight from there. And you'll see a whole bunch of Konohana blossoms that we can find too. And some treasure chests like the Steel Fist Sake! So we'll find up here. Explaining what we're doing. Jumping on the lily pads. Progressing through the game to reach our goal. Finding another treasure chest. It has a pearl in it. Got a weird place to find a pearl. It's a tiny pearl if it before like shrunk down. I mean the clovers are the regular size, but you know, whatever. And then we'll use this water spout. That's uh, probably you probably miss that the first time around. I can guarantee. And up here is a Kutani pottery. There's still more vine blossoms that we can reach. Starting with this one. And here we have... Hey, look at that! Stray Bead 92! Neat! So from there, there's a whole bunch of vine blossoms that we can vine to, and let's see if we can... Oop. Where is the other one? Ah, there it is. Okay, let me just do it. Oh, shit! Oh, no. Oh, damn. Uh, shit. Oh, can I still... Yike. Yeah, well, too late for me. Goodbye, folks! Hello again. Let's try that again. Let's do it properly this time. So, vine one. Then, uh... Vine two. And then, uh, Vine 3. Then I bet you didn't expect this. Vine 4. Wow, what a curveball. And that gets us an etched glass. A very valuable treasure that we can sell later for money. So now we gotta start worrying about money again. And now here's the million dollar question. How do we get back? Oh, here we go. Right there. Oh, they just stranded me here and I'd have to go all the way back. That would have been cruel. So we'll head over to Ishaku's place. Which was Isun's grandfather, if you didn't know. And apparently he's feeling a whole lot better. He's even not blind anymore. And that gets us 50 more praise. Okie dokie. How pleasant. So go over here, talk to good old Ishaku. Well, uh, Day of Darkness is here, bro. Oh. This is the game spelling out the fact that Ishaku is Isun's grandfather in case you didn't pick that up on your own. So if I ever but okay. You're praying for his happiness and give him Straby 93! I'm sorry, pal, I need to keep this. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him that uh, you're too cowardice to go outside of the village and talk to him, but whatever, let's get going. We can now leave Punk Tan Village and head on to, let's see here, oh wow, Shinshu Field! We can go ahead and take Kamui's mermaid pool. Or what it- Whoa, no, mermaid spring. I'm forgetting all the terminology, jeez. It's a less place taking too long. We'll go ahead and take that and head to Shinshu Field. Like I literally just got through telling you people. Telling myself, at least. From there, we're gonna head to Tama's place, which is not that way, and is not that way, and it's uh, certainly not that way. No, it's this way, that's right. Oh, man. The three years are starting to show, aren't they? I can't even remember if I even did stuff or didn't do stuff. Oh, well. Anyway, we're heading to Tama's place down here. Tama was the pyrotechnician that we saw all the way back in Season Freaking 1. That was a long time ago, friends. Well, all right, then. Tama here is apparently still feeling burnt out from the festival, which was 
couple years ago, I think. I mean, yeah. So, essentially what you gotta do is, well, make a cherry bomb. Which is how you did the first thing for him. Then you need to make another cherry bomb. And... Kaboom. And we net 30 more praise from that. Sweet. So now he's starting to get reinvigorated again. So we'll head outside, just for safety's sake. Go ahead and make it night. We'll let another day pass so I don't look like a fool and put three bombs in his house and he doesn't react and then I actually put three bombs in his house and he actually is impressed. Spoilers. Go ahead and use Gus because I can't believe I haven't gotten this treasure chest yet. Shows how rarely I visit. We'll get a bullhorn! You can sell that, right? Yeah. Oh, hey. It's also worth mentioning you can see your constellations that you uh, put in the sky. Impressive. That's Bakugami, so he's watching over us as we get, uh, as we make Tama happy. Then we come in and he's, uh, lost his, the drive that he just got a day ago. So, yeah. He needs something more, though. This is where it gets tricky. You just make one cherry bomb, and then two cherry bomb, and make sure that they don't touch, because you gotta make that another cherry bomb, and then go all the way over here for another cherry bomb, and that's how you got three. Trust me, that was irritating to figure out the first time around. But apparently that somehow gives us 50 praise, and that really, really invigorates him. I dare say what four bombs would do to him. Whatever, though. And so, in return, he gives us stray bead number... What is this? Nine! So, sweet. That's another stray bead in the bag. We got one more stray bead left to get this episode. Two left in total, three left technically. But, uh, <laughs> We're really coming to the end, though, folks. That's really starting to wrap up. I, I sort of can't believe it. Huh. But anyway, our next stop is all the way in Kamiki Village. We'll see you there after the cross fell. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, I am confident. Confident. It has been a very, very long time since we have been to Kamiki Village here. At least I think. So, there's one last thing we gotta do here to help us with another stray bead. A couple of things to do here, actually, that uh, we didn't really expect to do yet. So bears that uh, we forgot to feed, but don't think we really need to. Three praise isn't gonna help us all that much, really. Here's how I know it's been a long time. I went the wrong ass way again. And unfortunately, you can't jump off of here without it being idiot proof. You can jump off from here and go the right way. So I guess that's pretty good design. Jump down from where you were and go from there. The place we're going to is Kono Hana Sakuya over here. We head through the gate here and oh hey, there's Sakuya and cold in here? Yeah, every time that we sprout a new guardian sapling, there is a new guardian fruit for us, which has some kind of neat treasure in there for us. Treasures we can sell! I get money! So. Guess we'll just go ahead and cut these only two here. There's a one. There's a two. And that lands us a silver pocket watch. Nice. And a Kutani pottery. Not as nice. But, uh, we need to talk to these two ladies over here, but every time I go through the gate, they disappear. And Sakuya just tells me to be protected by the fresh scent of flowers. Really, though, you have to go around the shrine. So, we're gonna talk to Camille and Camellia here. I think we may have seen them, like, in passing once before a long time ago. 
But there's, but uh, not only are they still reeling from the festival, that was like a long fucking time ago. She wants us to do a couple things. First, she wants us to hit her in the head to make it not sure that she's still dreaming because she's so impressed with the flowers I bloomed over Konohana. And we get 10 praise from it. Oh yes, thank you kind dog for beating me in the head. You have some praise. But the point is, now she starts to believe in the possibility of a higher authority. And I don't think Sakuya has anything left for us. Yeah, 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 yeah. I keep thinking that there's gonna be maybe a couple other Guardian Fruits here, but yeah, whatever. And, uh, I thought that there was something else we had to do here, but apparently, we're done here. Second to, uh, head butter. That's it. Don't have much of an indication, so, yeah. Next place we go is Seon City. Alright. Seon City. Here we are. It's easiest to go into the entrance. If you're looking for these two, so what you do is you just head to this big lantern, then turn left. There they are. It keeps you from walking around the entire commoners district and the aristocratic district looking for these two. But now, here's where she starts getting a little bit skeptical about some things again. Apparently she was spent a long time on the road. Yes, it was only just about two minutes ago that we talked, and I shook her worldview. But apparently Camilla believes in the gods more than her atheist's fucking sister does. The thing is, in this world, gods actually do appear. Gods are actually walking among us. So, if it says, if someone says, hey, sprout a tree in front of me, you know, we can make that happen. Unbelievable, right? But apparently, an entire tree just popping right in front of- out of thin air in front of her eyes still just isn't quite enough. But if there was a rain shower right after the tree, then, well, hey, maybe then we'd be onto something. After all, extraordinary, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, right? So I forgot what the mark for deluge was. That's the other thing about this one. We need to- we need to have learned deluge, which we did in the last episode, quite frankly. So yeah, we do it right here, make a tree, and then I just remembered it's two lines instead of three. And that's enough to totally convince her and make turn her from a six on the docking scale to a one. Yes, we do. Actually, do. And thank you for your 50 praise! That's very nice. And because I converted her sister, she gives me stray beat 50! Sweet! That's like five stray beads in one episode. Just knocking them down, left and right. So now Camilla can actually see our markings, which means that she is an actual believer! More power for me! Ha ha ha! Yes. Well, next episode is going to be a lot of combat, a lot of fighting, because we're going to be doing the wanted lists. Because uh, we've got all of the stray beads except just one. Number 78 there. That's going to be a bitch and a half. Let me tell you what. But that's for later. And for now, we'll see you next time on Let's Play Okami HD. Okami HD.